Hi, my name is Anthony Sala, and I'm the CEO of Miracule, an RNA therapeutics company developing a treatment for FSHD. I also happen to be an FSHD patient. Before we get into the details of RNA therapy, I thought it may be helpful to review some of the basic biology around how inherited mutations can cause diseases like FSHD. Our genetic information is stored in 23 chromosomes in every cell in our body, and that contains the information to build our bodies. That chromosome is organized into small linear regions we call genes, and our genes and chromosomes are composed of long double-stranded DNA molecules. Each gene is, uh, each, each DNA strand is complementary to another strand so that the information in each strand is contained in the other strand and they can be copied. Our double-stranded DNA that is organized into a gene contains the structure of 3D little machines that we call proteins. The, when a gene is turned on to create a protein, we call that process expression. When you, when you turn on DNA, what happens is one strand is copied into its complementary cousin we call RNA in a process called transcription. That RNA we call a messenger because it moves from the DNA to other parts of the cells where it can be translated from the RNA message into that individual protein. Proteins are the building blocks of our cells. They're little tiny machines that perform all the functions and compose the structure of our cells and bodies. And this underlying process of DNA to RNA to protein happens in every living organism on the planet. And it, it underlies all of our biology and the biology of disease. When we inherit changes in our DNA from our parents, or they can happen spontaneously, if that happens in a gene, that leads to transcription of a modified RNA, which we call a disease RNA, which then gets translated in turn to a diseased protein. That, that mutated or changed protein, which can no longer function at like its normal protein function or gain a new function is what underlies diseases. And this is also the process in FSHD. Uh, the, the gene underlying FSHD is DUX4, which is contained on chromosome 4. Deletions in chromosome 4 lead to inappropriate expression or activation of the DUX4 gene, which leads to transcription in muscle cells inappropriately of DUX4 RNA, leading to translation of DUX4 protein. In healthy people that don't have FSHD, they don't express DUX4 in their muscles. When DUX4 is expressed in an FSHD patient in their muscle, that causes muscle toxicity toxicity specifically to the cells in their muscles. When you, when you as a patient experience pain in the morning in your calf or are limited in rotating your shoulder, that's because DUX4 has been turned on and expressed in some of the muscle cells in those muscles and they dam that damages that tissue inhibiting its motion or causing pain. And the, the real challenge behind therapeutic strategies is to inhibit this process of DUX4 expression in muscle cells. Today, you'll hear about three such strategies to develop therapeutics to treat FSHD. The first is, is, a gene, is gene therapy strategies. In the next talk, you'll hear from uh, Scott Harper's group, a gene therapy where they manipulated, created DNA that can inhibit the DUX4 message, the messenger RNA. In, in the, the third talk, you'll hear from Fulcrum Therapeutics. The, they're gonna describe using classical small molecules to target the proteins that initiate transcription of the DUX4 gene, activating this disease process. And that is currently in phase two, so I know many of you are excited to hear about that program. And now I may be a little bit biased, but I, third, in the rest of this talk, I wanna tell you about Miracule's program and others to create RNA therapies, where you create small RNAs that can target and inhibit that DUX4 messenger RNA, preventing the creation of DUX4 protein. So as we talked, discussed earlier, DUX4 mRNA is transcribed and or copied from a single strand of the DUX4 um, DNA gene. Uh, an RNA therapeutic is a small chemically synthesized or synthetic piece of RNA that's designed to be com complementary to that DUX4 RNA. So you, you take what's normally a single-stranded RNA molecule and you design a molecule that binds to it and makes it double-stranded similar to DNA. And so after you introduce that RNA therapeutic into the cell, it binds to that mRNA and the cell recognizes that double-strand RNA and initiates destruction of that, that messenger RNA 
intermediate, preventing cre creation of the DUX4 protein. The theory behind this is by creating and stopping DUX4 protein, we stop the toxicity that occurs in, in FSHD patients' muscles, protecting them and allowing them to remain healthy. And in patients with moderate or early stage disease, we think natural healing will be able to take over and allow them to maintain um, normal function throughout their life. So great, you know, and we can just, all we have to do is design an RNA therapeutic and give it to patients and it'll stop this process. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The process of DUX4 mRNA transport and translation of DUX4 protein happens inside muscle cells. And the, on the outside of every cell in our body is a membrane that's designed to keep cellular RNA and proteins in and keep out foreign RNA and proteins like an RNA therapeutic. And this is really the biggest challenge to developing an RNA therapy. But there are several strategies to overcome this challenge, getting enough of the RNA therapeutic into the cell to hopefully inhibit DUX4, destroy the DUX4 mRNA, inhibit DUX4 protein expression. One classical strategy that's been used by companies like Ionis is to directly inject the RNA therapeutic into a tissue like muscle. However, this hasn't been very successful for muscle-related diseases. First, because you don't get equal distribution and you really don't get enough of the RNA therapeutic into the cells, but also for a disease like FSHD, you'd have to inject muscles all over the body. Another strategy or, or technology that's used is what we call nanoparticles, where a small sphere is created with lots of the RNA therapeutic inside. They can be administered systemically in the blood, so they go all over the body, and then they fuse with specific cells in the body. One company developing a muscle-related therapeutic is Genetic, and they're developing a Duchenne's muscular dystrophy um, therapeutic uh, with their nanoparticle technology. Another strategy is to use natural antibodies to target RNA therapeutics to muscle. And uh, our company is using this strategy along with Dyne Therapeutics and Avidity, where we use the antibody to direct uptake into the muscle tissue. So now I'll tell you a little bit more specifically about our technology and how it works. So antibodies are natural um, proteins created by our immune system designed to bind to a specific other protein or, or gene. Uh, the antibody Miracule has designed um, um, binds to a protein on the outside of muscle cells that's involved in uptake of nutrients. So when we, and then by conjugating our RNA therapeutic to that antibody, we can inject it into the body. It binds to that protein on the outside of muscle cells and hitches a ride as those cells uptake nutrients with that protein. And so then we kind of trick the cell into taking up that RNA therapeutic. The RNA therapeutic is then, you know, released from the protein. The protein antibody is degraded. We can then interact with the DUX4 mRNA. Here on the right, I'm showing you an image of muscle cells that we that we have been donated from an FSHD patient kindly given to us by the Wellstone Institute that we can grow in a petri dish and what we did is we took our RNA therapeutic and we attached an infrared dye to it so we can see it under the microscope and we put our um, labeled RNA therapeutic conjugated to the antibody on those cells you can see this red color is the RNA therapeutic itself that's being taken up and getting internalized by those cells very effectively effectively. And the next question is, can, once it gets into those cells, can it eliminate the DUX4 transcript? So in this experiment, we've taken again our RNA therapeutic, conjugated to our antibody, and treated patient cells that are cultured um, in vitro. And we take and treat those cells and compare it to a control treatment without the oligo, without the RNA therapeutic, we can eliminate over 90% of DUX4 RNA. And we think, you know, in turn, that would eliminate 90% of the protein, hopefully curing the FSHD phenotype and that toxic DUX4 protein. But it's, it's one thing to show that we can get our RNA therapeutic into cells in a petri dish. The more important thing is, can we do it in an animal? So another experiment, what we did is we again used our infrared labeled RNA therapeutic conjugated to an antibody and we take it and we inject it under the skin on the back of a mouse. This is a normal, healthy mouse. We then can flip the mouse over on its belly, anesthetize it, and shine infrared light on it, seeing where the therapeutic is going. You can see in this control animal that was not treated. We don't see any of our therapeutic, obviously, 
but in the treated animal, the drug has gone all over the body, building up in the extremities, presumably in the muscle. But to really see that it's gotten into the muscle, we take that lug muscle and we take the leg muscles and we focus in on them. And so this is an infrared background signal of the, of the upper muscles of the leg. And here is the signal for a therapeutic, one in the non-treated and one in the treated. Again, we see really nice enrichment of the antibody delivering that therapeutic into the cells. So now you're like, great, Anthony, I'm, I'm glad you told us about your science and I'm glad you're excited about it, but we really wanna know as patients or when are these drugs gonna be in the clinic? So all three companies I told you about earlier, we're currently in the preclinical stage optimizing our therapeutic and testing it in animal models, like I just showed you, so it can be effective. For us as a company, we think we can finish that this year and then start the normal safety studies that we have to do in mice and monkeys to show that our drug is safe and convince the Federal Drug Administration to allow us to test in patients. We hope to do that in 2023 in partnership with the FSHD Society, uh, friends of FSH and fantastic researchers like Catherine Wagner, Yuan Chen, and Robbie Twill, helping us uh, to you know understand FSHD biology and, and test our drugs. I also want to thank everyone for their time and attention and the scientists at Miracle that have performed a lot of this work.